Hi, uh, I'm Zachary Elmore, and if you're watching this, you might have watched my see my demo reel about the level I've created, which is right here. Uh, and you're probably wondering, uh, how does it all work? Uh, what's the coding behind everything, and what's the process of how you built this, and uh, how you got everything working in the way it showed in the video? So in this video, I'm going to be showing you my code. Uh, and all the details very briefly, as brief as I can, on each, uh, each part. So uh, I guess right now I'll show you the code for the, uh, the character, the, the, the player's character, the avatar, the uh, third person character. So let's start off right there. So right here is all the code, all the coding for the uh, third person character. Uh, all this right here should be the uh, Default, the, the the basic coding that uh, is already implemented in the third person character for the Unreal Engine. So all over here is like your basic uh, basic necessities for the player to be a player character. The movement, the jump, uh, some extra bits for VR implementation, which we didn't, which me and my uh, team didn't really do. Um, uh, so this project was a team project uh, there were three of us uh, I was tasked with creating most of the code for this actually um, so what I did was I created uh, projectiles for our character our character is a slime this entire game is based on a slime who is trapped within a dungeon and they manage to break free. Uh, they have to go through the uh, through the dungeon and get to the outside world. Which, at the end, the slime starts consuming the world, gets bigger and bigger until the world is no more. Which is why the slime was trapped. Because it, if it was uh, kept out in the outside world, it would, well, of course, destroy the entire world. So <laughs> there's that. Um, so I was tasked with creating the second level. The second level is an ice world. And basically I had free reign of my creativity and how I would go about with making puzzles in that. But uh, I'll get to that later. First, let's uh, show you all the, uh, all the code I made for the third person character. So where to start? Uh, I guess I can show you like the sequence of when it first starts. So when the game first starts, if I can find it, ah, here it is. Uh, the event begin play. So once the game starts, uh, one of my uh, team's code for it uh, gets implemented first uh, for our camera movement. So whenever the pl the player gets to a certain point in the game or a certain space the camera would uh, would pan over to the side instead of uh, allowing the player to have control of the camera wherever they look it would just pan to the side and it'll be like uh, somewhat of a uh, two at a 2d perspective so that whenever they go to like a, a crevice or something like a, a hole in the wall the player can just be panned over to like a 2D perspective and just it'll be like a like a side scroller Mario game somewhat. So after that goes through it it sets the game to pause. So the game starts out paused and then you would have to press P to start it up. And then after that uh the widget for the uh, player's mass, which was also implemented by my uh, part, my teammate uh, Sarah, uh, that shows the uh, the mass bar, which is on the left side of your screen, and it starts out as zero. And with the mass, once the player gets to a certain area in the game, they are able to absorb liquid either liquid, magma, whatever, and then as they absorb that by clicking left in that area, they the 
mass of the character uh, increases as well as the uh, size of the character. So there's that. Um, let's see here, what else? I also implemented a background music, which is right, right there. And I got this background music from the Unreal Engine store. It was free for one, one of the few months. It was free. Uh, it was a sound. It was a music pack. So I used that to implement some background music to keep the player entertained, make them feel calm, collective. You know, help them uh, with the stress of the puzzle, the Simon Says puzzle right here, because that can get a little infuriating if you don't pay attention to the sequence but enough of that until later um, this is my my teammates uh, Cody here when they absorb the uh, liquid uh, I'm not exactly 100% sure how this uh, goes through I didn't take a look until now and I, I would rather have her explain it but she's not here so uh, if you can read code, you can just go ahead and pause it and just read along with it. Uh, actually, I, I yeah, okay, uh, I'll, yeah, I, I, I can just read along for you. Um, so first, there's a value, a boolean value, on contact. So once the uh, player it overlaps the uh, the collision box for where they can absorb liquid. Uh, It'll, if it's true, then it goes through here. Uh, mass percentage, so if it's less than 100%, then they can keep absorbing as much liquid, liquid as they want. But if they get to the maximum capacity, then they can't absorb anymore, and they would have to expel it out by pressing Q to uh, keep absorbing more. Uh, this increases the mass percentage as they keep click left clicking. Uh, this it, slime mask. This is how they. Uh, oh no, that's not it. See here, slime mask. Uh, that's I'm not exactly sure what that does, but either way, it uh, as the more mass they uh, absorb, the uh, then they start, it starts changing their scale. So it starts scaling out the character. So they get bigger and bigger and bigger or smaller and smaller and smaller as they expel it out. So, all right. Um, this is for collecting data. I implemented this just in case we want to collect data, but we never used it. So there's really no need for this in here. Um, ah, here we go. So this is the projectile function. I copied and pasted it from the first person shooter uh, example uh, game mode. So, but with copying and pasting it from there into here, there were, I found some issues. One of them being uh, when I created my projectiles, they don't really have the same functionality as they would when they collide with destructible meshes as they would in the uh, the first person shooter game mode. So th there was no uh, calculations being made at all when they would contact destructible meshes. So instead of destru the destructible meshes breaking on contact with projectiles, they just stay solid. Like they, they cannot compute like what's hitting them at all. It's like they, they're being hit by ghosts. But I found ways to go around that so, but it was still very useful to keep the uh, objects that are supposed to shoot out to shoot out to give it that effect that you are shooting something, you are hitting something with this object you are shooting. And I found ways to make it so that when that object hits a destructible mesh, it actually does destroy. So, there's that. Um, this little bit of code over here to the side. Uh, these are for, let's see here, place on location, spawn, yeah, these 
Yeah, these are for the projectiles. So every time the player hits Q and whatever uh, ability that they have active activated, it will spawn that object or the blueprint that I made for those projectiles. It will spawn them and then it'll... I made it so they would play a sound later, but I guess I completely forgot about that. This has been like a full... Uh, full-on project in the process over the span of a couple months working bit by bit uh, so if the character's ability is a slime and if it's true then it then when it's when Q is pressed and everything it will shoot out that projectile along with a sound uh, if it's if it's not a slime then it goes to the next one if it's ice it will shoot it out if it's true if not if it's false it goes to the next one if it's magma it'll shoot it out then it'll play sound but if it's not then it does absolutely nothing so uh let's see here yeah this this big huge chunk of code i was also asked to implement a trail effect for the character so whenever the character moves around uh, it should have a trail effect of slime following around because it's a slime it'll more likely have a trail of like liquid or water as it's going around I had a lot of trouble with that so I went to YouTube I looked up some videos and this that's where I got all this code from I basically followed a video tutorial by a man named Matt P or at least his YouTube name is Matt P uh, the link to his video will be along with this video but I also put added the link with the demo reel that you that you've seen um, so I follow along with his video and with all this code it's very hard and complicated I can't really uh, explain how it works like he does in the video so if you're wanting to know how it works just watch the videos there's three parts to it uh, I only offered the uh, first part for his, his video so uh, just go into his uh, account his channel and look for the other twos and then get the, get the full experience of how it works uh, yeah, this is this is this is like a long uh, tutorial to follow and try and understand how it works for at least for a brief moment. Uh, yeah, that that took that took uh, that took a long time. Um, all right, let's hear. Why not? All right. Uh, okay, this I added in here for the projectiles. So whenever. So these are to switch through from ability to ability, depending on what abilities you have, what abilities you've picked up, and uh, how to switch over them. So the first one would be the first ability you would get from level one, which is the slime ability, where you would get the ability to spit, to expel your own mass, which would be, of course, expelling your own uh material which would be slime so when you pick up an ability it automatically sets a ability picked up a value named ability picked up a boolean to true so once you pick up an ability it's always going to be with you it's going to be in your inventory as you go through the levels so the first ability you pick up would be slime it would be set to true that you picked it up and then it would automatically set uh, slime to true as your active ability to expel your mass. Once you get to level two, my level, once you pick up the ice ability, it'll set it automatically set it to ice, and then when you have that, you're you can just freely switch between it by pressing one or two. Like if you want to go back to slime, press one. If you want to go back to ice, press two. Uh, I don't think we had a set level to use magma although I wanted to use it just to get through some of the other puzzles to make it a little more interesting uh, we never used it but if you did pick it up it would set it to mag magma true and then set the rest of these to false 
and then you can just press a if you're if you switch over to slime or ice you can press through to go back to your magma ability I was also going to implement it where the character's texture which ch would change with the ability as well so if you were in slime mode or or in ice mode then if you go immediately to your magma ability your uh, material the material of the character would change as well to to magma so I would give the character like a, a magma texture uh, wrapping around it um, let's see here anything else um, there is this giant giant sequence of code this is for the Simon Says sequence so this goes through and checks to see if what if the sequence of the character if they follow the sequence or not so I had to mainly put in like all the entire sequence of the Simon Says to check to see okay so if the first node they touch is it red if not then it's false and they have to rewatch the sequence the sequence the, of the lights to show you the uh, sequence of the Simon Says of what it wants you to go through it'll repeat itself until you get it right so if it's true then it adds to my step so it, it checks for for the uh, first value of my step it's zero and then if it's true, then it checks to see like, okay, so what node did you hit? Is If it's red, it's true, it adds to my step. And then it plays a sound to cue that, yes, uh, that step was correct. And then it goes over, and then it checks to see if it's zero. If it's not zero, then it checks if it's one. If it is one, then it checks the second one. And then it adds to my step. But if it goes to two, goes to check to see if it's zero if not if it's one if it's not if it's two then yes now did you hit yellow now if now if they were to hit like say red or green or blue then it would go out to false it would reset my step play a sound that you got it wrong and then it'll go through the entire sequence again and within the blueprint itself it would re-loop this light sequence and then you would have to start all over again until you get it right. Once you get it right, then you pass uh, puzzle one. So puzzle one will be set to pass, I mean to true. So uh, it checks to see if you passed the first puzzle or not. If false, then it goes through this. If it's true, then it takes you to the second sequence and checks to see if you got any of this all correct. And so on, say, so forth, uh, rinse and repeat. So that's it for the first person character, the code behind it. Uh, so I guess I would now show you the process of building this level. Uh, so I started out with blocking it out within Unreal. Now this is what it looked like when it was blocked out. Uh, I was testing to see what it would look like, like if it would look good if I were to block out like the uh, rough edges for the uh, platforms, the rock, rock, ice rocky platforms. It didn't look out too great, but I still kept it. I don't know why. I just, uh, I think I was just really tired at that point. And then after that, I imported all the assets in here from Unreal to uh, Maya, which I then started modeling the actual level itself with the assets so this is the first image of that uh, what is going okay there we go second image and then here's the third image with the uh, giant glacier stalactite that uh, that glows <laughs> and then this is what it looks like now where it's textured and everything um, for the ice and rock textures I used for the walls, the ceiling, uh, this, the platforms. I used an application called Texture Forge. Texture Forge is also a website. Uh, with Texture Forge, you can create your own assets easily by using a type of uh, uh, interface that you can 
used to uh, randomize certain to bump maps, normal maps and stuff. Uh, you can change the colors to whatever you want. Uh, and also randomize like uh, the, uh, what was it, geometry of say like a rocky surface. Like you want to switch up or randomize how it would look in certain ways. Uh, it's also a crowd. It's also a community uh, driven too. So, if you have any normal maps you'd like to share to people to use, and everything, then you can upload it to the website, and then people can use the normal maps, and then start randomizing how they look, uh, changing the uh, geometry of the rocks and the texture, so on and so forth. So that's what I use to create the textures for the the walls the ceiling, the platforms, and all that. Um, okay, uh, now let's go back to the rest of the code. So this is the code for the ice ability. So how this works is that uh, this is the for the bounce function. So this is how it turns. So it takes delta seconds, so over time, uh, it would keep rotating the uh, the ice ability, the, the cube, and then it would it would keep rotating it over time. It would still increase its rotation and the yaw. <laughs> um, and relative. So and this is the bounce function. So it takes in the the uh, the vector location. Uh, del its move vector and then it's delayed over time just to give it like uh, instead of it being really fast it it's slowed down a bit slow enough to the point where it, 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 it to the point where it looks good um, so then th this is for it bouncing up and down so over time it'll keep going through this cycle of just bouncing up and down between one vector to the other. Um, now this is the code for the uh, pillar bridge right here. So what I did right here is there's there were a ton of errors popping up because whenever I had the uh, collision ca uh, capsule right here and over, over, right over the uh, destructible mesh to keep the players from accidentally destroying it before the wrecking ball hits it. Uh, I put this collision, this, uh, collision capsule here to protect it from the player before they uh, activate it. Activate it by pressing the button, which is uh, right here, yeah. So how this works is uh, once the player overlaps the collision box of the button, the button is then goes through an animation of going down to a certain point, and then once they leave the box, then the button goes back goes back up, and then he just keeps do doing that. Um, and this is the uh, code for how it goes up and down by taking in the uh, its idle position and then changing it over to the uh, pressed position. Uh, and then this this changes the collision for the caps the uh, the uh, collision capsule that I use to protect the destructible mesh. So instead of it blocking all, it goes to no collision. So the wrecking ball can bypass it and then actually hit it and destroy it, which gives it its uh, actually yeah destructible mesh. It has its own natural thing, so that's not animation by itself. I mean, I, I mean that's that is animation by itself, but it's just uh, it's its own function. Now this is the animation for the wrecking ball. So once the player uh, collides with the collision box of the button, it starts up the animation for the wrecking ball to rotate and then hitting the destructible mesh and then stopping at a certain point. Uh, once it does that, then the animation for the uh, pillar bridge or the top of this pillar that becomes a bridge it starts up that animation for it to start falling and then rolling to its new position as a bridge and I try to make it look as natural as I possibly could 
and I think I, I did it I did it a very decent job with it at least very decent uh, so what happens is that it starts off by repositioning its location to where it's supposed to be and then it goes over to uh, rotating it as well uh, and as the uh, player collides with I, I, I put in a second collision box to get the sound correct like the sound effect that it plays when you collide with the uh, collision box I tried getting it set to a specific time so once the player collides with the button the, uh, the first collision box activates and the second one activates as well and then it's destroyed immediately so that the sound doesn't replay itself constantly over and over again so it, it's destroyed and then it's delayed it delays the sound until about a minute and three quarter a second and three quarters which is around the time when the wrecking ball makes contact with the destructible mesh and then it plays the sound so that's the code for that uh, here's the code for the Simon Says puzzle and the destructible meshes that come up once you complete each sequence. Uh, for this, it for this one, it starts off with the uh, first sequence. So this is the sequence for the lights that shows you the sequence for the first puzzle of the first round of Simon Says. So I already went through some of the code within the third person character which it ties into this so if they were to get the entire sequence correct then it would go and follow the sequence of repositioning the platforms now the platforms are set invisible you can't see them in the game until you uh, finish uh, all the sequences of this or at least you won't be able to see the first four until you complete the first puzzle of Simon Says. And then once you do, I have it set to resetting the visibility to true so you can see them as they uh, reposition themselves through an animation. And then they reposition themselves by going up so you are able to uh, jump on them and get to the, the platform that holds the uh, ice ability for you to pick up. So if it is true, then it goes through all this of it animating, repositioning the first four, and then it sets the first sequence complete to true. Now, if they were to get it false, if they were to get to be incorrect, then it would uh, set pass to uh, true, which is... Oh, okay, I see why. So what it does is that pass would be set to false briefly it would take in the uh, the value that's within the first I mean third person character it casts it which means that the uh, the blueprint here would be receiving information from third person character like specific information that once uh, once you extract it specific information you can use that to make other uh, other parts of this code to function properly like it like it's supposed to. Now if it were to be false, if they got one, the sequence is wrong, then it would go through this process of setting the pass to true, a default pass, so that way that if they did pass all of them, then it goes through true, but if they were to get it wrong, at least one, then within the third person character, it would set it to false, and then goes back through here, and then resets it to true and then it would replay the uh, animation sequence for the lights. And then this entire process would go over and over again. Uh, oh yeah, I completely forgot about this. Yeah, this is the sound sound cue for when you do get the sequence correct. So it plays through here. Once you get the uh, each sequence correct, this plays and then starts up with the uh, platforms uh, repositioning themselves to their proper locations. Uh, and it just does that for the entire uh, entire uh, playthrough of Simon Says. Once you go through all the sequences, you pass all of them, 
then the uh, collision box is set to destroy after you completed it. And then that's it for that. And now we go to the, the planks. The planks are right here. Um, so what I have right here, I did the same thing with this as I did with the collision box protecting destructible mesh for the pillar bridge. So it's set to block all for its collision so that way the player won't smash on through them uh, before they get the ice ability. So, but once they do get the ice ability, then they are able to, once they shoot their ice projectile at the planks, then it plays a sound and then it destroys the uh, the collision component that's protecting the destructible meshes. And then once that's destroyed, then the projectile would keep on going until it hits one of the two planks and the planks uh, destroys as, as you've seen the demo rail. That's how that works. And oh, oh, this took me so many hours to uh, get done because it was so repetitive trying to figure out not only that but trying to build the steps individually it it took so long but I'd say it's it's well worth it uh, so this works the same way as the pillar bridge you got the animation going for when you uh, when you collide with the collision box and it, it's pressed and then goes back up this also plays a long drawn out uh, sound as the stairs come up from from the ground and then starts forming stairs actual stairways uh, this goes on for about six and a half seconds I believe it should and then once once you press the button the sound plays uh, the animation plays as well for the each of these steps to reposition itself uh, up along the z-axis and falls falls along with each one at the same time until it reaches its uh, proper position that's how that animation works if that makes any sense I, ho I hope I'm I made that as clear as I could so step sounds uh, oh yeah this plays at the end of the animation once the last step is at its final proper position this plays like a, a lock sound that locks in, that g gives the sound effect that all the steps are locked in, so, and the se entire sequence is done. So it cues that. Oh, that took, took so much time. And then you, and then we have the final ending, the final uh, blueprint, where once you collide with this collision sphere, uh, I have the sparkler effects set to uh, invisible so once you collide with the collision sphere they become uh, visible again it uh, plays the uh, the sound the sound cue that hey congratulations you completed my level <laughs> applause applause pat, it, pat yourself on the back congratulations it's done you passed and then it, uh, let's see here, uh, I have it casting to the third person character and then constrict their movement so they can't move anymore. So their movement is stopped immediately. Uh, and then casting the end widget, a widget being uh, like the, the user in interface, the HUD. So I access a HUD, a widget, which is this. Uh, level complete. So this is activated and it it's taken and then it's being placed into the onto the player's screen letting them know that letting the player know that they have passed the level they completed it and congratulations they've won so that's basically everything that's working in this game i hope i made everything clear i hope i didn't make things too boring for everyone but that's basically how this entire level works. Uh, I guess I can talk about uh, how the player respawns and how they uh, the, the kill sequence whenever they fall down to the abyss. So, so right here, uh, it casts to the third person player. 
it takes in their uh, current location and if they go and fall to a certain down below a certain uh, point then it it uh, calculates that they've gone hey uh Hey player, you've uh, gone past a certain point. Uh, this me, I'm going to assume that you fell to your death, and I'm going to take you, and you are dead. And then it immediately spawns them to their uh, last saved location. So, how this works, the spawning works. They're they start off at their spawn point, and that's the default value for my location, is wherever they they first spawn within the level. And once they collide with the uh, collision box for checkpoints, they access a checkpoint and then their my location value, vector value, changes to wherever that uh, collision box is located. So whenever they fall to their death, they immediately go back to their previous saved my location uh, location event. So it, uh, it targets the third person character it gets their world location at that collision box that they pass through and then resets their my location to whatever location they previously uh, accessed a collision box that is saved and this these collision boxes are located right here right there right within the spring right there and right over here on the uh, the platform where you get your uh, ability at so that's basically how um, I made my uh, second level for this game, and uh, like I said before, I hope you I didn't bore you guys to death. I hope uh, this helps you to understand how this level works and everything. Uh, so yeah, that's how I made all this. So thank you for watching, and hope you guys have a good day and. Be sure to stay tuned because I'm going to be uh, making uh, more levels, more games here during the summer while I'm while I'm taking a break from classes. So be sure to uh, keep like keep checking in, keep seeing if I'm making stuff. Keep checking in, uh, check out my Twitter because I'll be uh, definitely updating that. I'll uh, put a link to my uh, Twitter account for you guys to keep checking in to see what I'm doing. So yeah, there's that. So I'll see you guys later. Uh.